Hi, this video is about yet another design flaw with the Rigol DP832. So I'll just jump straight in and uh, do a demonstration. So I'm going to set uh, both these channels, they're both set to 1 volt and 3 amp output. Okay, so if we turn the two channels on, we see 1 volt being generated. So that's perfect, there's nothing wrong there. So what if I short out channel 3? So by the way, I'm measuring channel 2. Now I've shorted out channel 3. And the fan makes big noise. We're getting 3 amps out. But channel 2 is still reporting 1 volt. It's still regulated and it's still producing 1 volt output. Now the thing about the Rigol DP832 is that channel 2 minus and channel 3 minus are supposedly common. So it doesn't matter whether I plug this cable here into channel 3 minus or channel 2 minus. So how about I plug it in here? Uh-oh. Look at that. Way off 1 volt. And that is way outside the spec. Th this value should be correct to plus or minus 10 volts, plus or minus 0.05%. So it should be at least 0.985 at least. But instead it's 0.943. Okay, that is... 57 millivolts off. Now you might be tempted to say, well, this is a bit silly. Surely you should just always be able to put the current right back into the correct terminal where you would expect it to go. Um, and that's absolutely fine if you've got two completely separate circuits and you want to give one of them 12 volts and there's a completely separate other circuit that you want to give 5 volts. That's absolutely fine. But I think, I mean, the point of a triple output power supply is you might want to have a circuit that takes plus or minus 12 volts for like a audio power amplifier stage and also on the same ground another 5 volt line to do some sort of audio processing or some sort of logic and if you wanted to do that with this circuit then you know you could take your 5 volts off that channel you could take your negative 12 volts off that channel, you could take your positive 12 volts of that channel, you could short these two out so that you get negative 12 volts here. But where do you connect your ground? Do you connect it here? Do you connect it here? Do you connect it to both? It shouldn't matter at all, but with this supply it really really does. So that is really quite a flaw. So let's take a look inside to see why this happens. So this board in here uh, regulates channels 2 and 3. So this is the low side current sense resistor for channel 3 connected to the black cable there, which is the negative terminal of cable 3. And this is the same thing for cable uh, channel 2 with the grey cable. Now, I won't do it while the power supply is on. But if you check for continuity when the power supply is off between this terminal and this terminal, you see a short, okay, which is fine. They're supposed to be common. Uh, but if you then go ahead and unplug this cable, you don't see a short anymore. So the shorting between the two channels, the, what's forcing those channels to be common, is obviously on this side of the plug. And in fact, the, the reason that the two channels are shorted is the current goes from this point here up through the grey cable right over to the front terminal back along the grey current sense wire here into the second to last uh, crimp here and then it's crimped onto the black current sense wire flows all the way back out to the front terminal and then finally back along this black power cable here to that point here and this is really pretty broken because the whole point of a current sense wire is that it's supposed to have practically zero current flowing through it and therefore zero voltage drops. You get an accurate voltage reading. But this voltage sense wire here can have three amps running through it. Um, it's, yeah. And the thing that's really weird about it is it would be so easy to avoid. All they need to do is short out these negative terminals here, rather than shorting them out via these, you know, at the other end of the voltage uh, sense wires, 
they should just be shorted out right behind these terminals by a big thick wire here and that would pretty much completely get rid of this problem entirely the resistance along the sensor wires from one terminal to the other is 38 milliohms, which is a lot. You can easily get, you know, 3 milliohms or less with just a small bit of hookup wire between these two. And in fact, that is a way that you can go ahead and fix this problem with your own DP832, um, is just to go ahead, take off this front panel, and short them out properly so that you're no longer relying on those sense wires to do that shorting. So, I don't have a suitable thermometer to hand, but I do know one way of detecting if something is over 100 degrees. Yep, 